What's up everyone and welcome to another edition of the Off Balance. Today we have a breakdown. The match will be myself versus John Combs. Of course, John Combs, he's been around for a while, black belt for I don't know how many years. He's competed against the big names, has won trials, has won a bunch of other comps that I can't recall right now. But he's a pretty good, he's a pretty uh, legit beast. Uh, good guillotine, check him out on Fanatics if you want to. And uh, yeah, let's get right to it. All right, so we start off the match on the feet here. Boom. Pull guard right away. Um, could have wrestled, chose not to, whatever. Um, John Combs uses a nice grip on the hip here to uh, try to try to pin one of my hips. But I, I, use, the, um, I use my left leg to re-pummel and get inside position here. Working a two-on-one, trying to start working elevations. John Combs does a good job of high-legging. Um, here playing between, you know, supine guard, seated, he uses a good, he does a good job. So here, one little tag that I like doing, it's a little risky, you know, there's, there's definitely back exposure when you go for it. See that grip that I use right here, whoop, right around the knee. Um, this helps me stay connected to him as I invert and bring the legs around. Uh, there's always back exposure again, so you can bait your opponent to get into it. And then go take the back. So here also, here's, let's see that entry real quick. Try to spin underneath, spin to the far leg, standard. And here I'm trying to I'm trying to just get underneath him and control a single leg X. I'm trying to control any kind of leg entanglement. Um, let's see what just happened here real quick. Uh, see that grip on the ankle throughout the match. I was able to. I was had. I had good success using this ankle grip here. Ke kept uh, John on on one knee, and it made uh, pummeling this uh, left leg over, and starting to uh, work inversions underneath the near leg a lot easier. So here you see me going after that leg. He spins. I follow. And again, you see me, I'm not trying to go for finish, I'm just trying to go for control here. Control the position, slow him down. See here, there it is, I get a single leg X, try to keep both legs. Try to keep both legs down, and just try to work something here, slow a bit the pace. Because, he, you know, he's very dynamic, very quick. The front headlock, so I'm trying to take him into my game here, you know. Play the leg entanglements here, what I try to do. I don't want to go belly down, because I know he's going to come up. If I go belly down, try to expose the heel. Um, I think he'll come up, so I try to reap instead and force him to turn away. That gives me back exposure, but also it gives me transition to the inverted. So you see what I do here. Um, as he goes to turn, instead of following, what I do is I take the I take my right leg out. Boom. See that? Post it on the mat here and bring my hips up. You can find this, guys, in my instructional. This is explained in my instructional. Um, so yeah, from here, usually it gives you... Access to the, see, that grip that I use, whoop, one on the heel, one on the ball of the foot. Exactly the way I, the way it is on the DVD, guys. Get the DVD, it's break it down every step. And now look from here, boom, again, see where the heel is, see that line. You want to dive in front of that line to catch the heel and get a good bite. Your weight's onto the heel, so it's a lot harder to slip. John Combs does a good job here of trying to heel slip. And turns with it here one mistake from me I could have done reacted a bit faster is as he rolls out instead of following belly down is to do the same thing I did with the outside but to go into the 50 50 so if see my left foot here if I pay, place it somewhere here on the mat and go belly down I can put him back into the 50 50 and keep playing the leg it sorry I had club soda and keep playing the leg entanglement game we keep going see I'm belly down I lose it and then I pass it to the other side, and then again, same thing. You see, I have, I have one knee underneath. I have my right knee underneath his right knee. Um, I have that grip on the knee. You can't see it, but I'm basically, uh, actually, you can see it. Yeah, see my hand here. That's my hand reaching, trying to, trying to regain the knee line. So I lay the leg over, try to threaten the leg. He clears the knee, and I switch back to the secondary leg. He backs back, uh, back steps, and see, I stay on the secondary leg. So. That's one thing you can do, switching from one leg to another. You know, you don't want to overcommit to one leg, you switch to the other. 
we keep playing here in kind of a like a uh, what's it called calf slicer on one leg single leg x on the other leg uh switching between one and the other again that grip on the ankle is, is just it's the only not the only thing i'd say but it's 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 giving me some kind of control on on uh, john combs mobility here again trying to regain the inside position he's trying to get the inside position it's a battle for inside position here uh, so i'm just trying to control you see he's trying to let me go back a bit here see the hand his hand he's trying to get the inside position here i'm lacing that leg over i'm getting the inside position when i lace the leg over what i usually do is i is i once it passes between both legs i retract the bottom one and i invert into the saddle on the near leg and when they back step is i mix it so i'll attack either the far leg or i'll attack the near leg <clears throat> let's keep going so there you go, back step, back to the near leg. And now here I think I spaz in his face. Sorry, John Combs, if you're listening to this. I don't mean to spaz. I think I was maybe just a little too fired up. We reset. I grab a sip. And we're back on. Get my shotgun grip. Stay nice and close. Try to get up on top here, you know. Oh, we dodged the bullet right here. I don't know if you guys saw it. That was so quick. Um, right as soon as there's any threat for the head, somehow I managed to circle my head out. Um, and then I'm like, all right, I'm going back to guard. And I keep playing the same dilemma, guys. I felt you can feel it when when uh, when you're getting closer and closer. And uh, I felt like with this with this game plan, I could I could keep him in the area that I'm more comfortable in. And I was trying to keep the game in that area as much as possible. Try to work my submission game. <clears throat> Same game plan. Um, he's doing a good job of staying very low, keeping the hips away. Um, he does a nice... He does threaten one side here, goes back the other, forces me to you know have to move side to side and, and re-guard and pummel and pummel. I think had he done something more like that, it would have tired me out a little bit more. It would put me a bit more on the defensive. Um, rather here, staying on the same side, pressuring into me is, is kind of where I want you, you to be. Here I force an inversion, go back to the far leg. Pommel to the inside. He's trying to stack me here. Here he's trying to go for an ankle lock, so I kind of bait the, the heel hook to take the, the heat off of it. Again, pommel's in. I grab that grip on the knee, same thing, invert. We. Oh, that's closer than I remember. Um, now from here, I roll through on the heel hook. I try to go outside Ashi, overcommit, open myself up, and now boom, he's past my guard. Um, but again, with that with that kind of rule set, I'm not too worried about getting my guard pass. What I'm more worried about is getting submitted and giving the inside position. So. As you can see here, my hands are to the inside, my elbows stay to the inside. John Combs starting to turn me to the side here and uh, start working back exposure here. It's super important to stay calm and not to overcommit to something. You're going to have to, you know, play between one side and the other when you're trying to pass. But it's important to, um, especially in a submission, if, if there are points and you're down and you, there's not much time left, you know, you got to take a bit more risks in my opinion. But in submission only, it, it's good to, you know, Take a couple of seconds, see where he's trying to go. Because um, sometimes in mid-transition, they, they leave a bit of openings for you to invert underneath and start attacking legs. So, you know, being calm and patient in, in these situations where usually you would be used to fighting uh, guard passes, I think it could be beneficial sometimes, depending on the situation. So I re-guard here, trying to off-balance him in that direction. As you can see, I have one hand uh, on the ankle. I have my hips on top of his ankle. And I'm trying to use my shin, my shin, scissoring my shins, trying to off balance him in that direction. John Combs does a good job here of keeping his weight back, uh, which makes it hard for me to off balance him towards the side. What I should be doing here uh, in order to uh, to keep attacking here is to pummel my left leg to the inside. So uh, maybe going back to a shin to shin situation and working to get underneath. Um, uh, yeah, that, that could be an option when when they bring their weight back like that <clears throat> uh that leaves me open to leg drags so as you see boom he takes a two and one such a threat in the leg drag and i'm forced to re-guard here give him back the inside position and now he goes back to his knee cut i frame 
Same same initial battles here. We gotta go back to that chin to shin. Shin to shin with you know a grip around the knee. Trying to work inside position. He tries to go head and arm here. Um, that leaves me open for an entry. As you can see here, this is an entry I really like to do. Uh, John Combs did a good job of evading it, but if you're able to lock that up, sometimes it, it really helps. So as you can see, my, my shin here is against the hip and I have the other knee right behind his knee. So it's if you look at it, it's kind of like having the saddle before really grabbing it. And then what you can do now with your with your right hand is pull that pull that heel right here, boom, pull it to your hip, pull it in that direction, pull it in that direction. And then once you have it there, what you do is you invert on onto your other shoulder. So you see how um, I'm kind of on my right shoulder here. I'm kind of on this shoulder here. What you want to do is invert and then get on this shoulder, get on the, get on the left shoulder and that will force him to back step and give you the heel. I wasn't connected enough here to John Combs. Unfortunately, he reacted pretty well, but you can still see, I kind of still have that positioning um, where you can force uh, a bend on the hip and kind of force the person to roll. I get a lot of success with it in training. And uh, unfortunately, this competition, I wasn't able to pull it off, but it, it's something that I have a lot of success with. <clears throat> We're in that little battle here, same thing. I'm very confident from there when it's like half guard pass or like I, I, anytime there's a bit of space between the heel and the knee uh, and the hip, I mean, sorry. Um, I'm trying to get underneath somebody and attack their leg. Framing here, repummeling, framing. He's doing a good job of pressuring. That can wear you down. I sit up, goes for the neck here. Um, gives me top position. Um, that actually is what manages to give me the finish here. I try to pressure into him. I try to go into a leg drag position. And once I'm able to get the foot across, notice how I fall. And this is if you if you want if you want something from this video, take that. If you want to level up today, do that. Um, just grab the heel as you're sitting before instead of falling with nothing. And another thing you can grab well, other than the heel is you don't really see it. Hold on. Let me let me move it forward a bit. All right. Maybe you can see it right. Yeah, whatever. You can see it here. See how I have one hand around the thigh. So that kind of uh, forces his knee to stay in that in that angle and that exposes the heel. So here I don't get a clean bite. I don't get a clean finish. But you see, I'm trying to now control the hips. So I'm trying to uh, pummel this leg over. You see now how both my feet are together. They're not in between, so it's not like a conventional saddle, but I have both feet on the far hip. Okay? And I still have the same grips. One hand on the knee, one hand on the heel. Controlling the far hip, so it's making it harder for him to turn. Now, he does a good job of separating, and now he goes to block the hip, but I really lock my legs around the hip, and that gives me the time to grab the hips again. Uh, notice how the secondary leg is kind of... Um, it's going to be hard for him to use it because I'm pulling myself. With these grips, not only are you uh, exposing the heel and you're maintaining position, but uh, you're making it hard for them to turn and you're giving them less space to kick between your legs. But not only that, you're able to pull yourself closer to them. So that secondary leg here uh, that, that they use is kind of nullified. Um, and the finishing position here, look, boom, past my leg across. Now I'm locking both ankles around the far hip. <clears throat> and only now do I let go and connect my hands for the finish. I start hands, hands high, chin low. Um, I'm not ripping it across my chest. I'm bridging, and that's the finish. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, this match wasn't easy by any means. And as you can see, these matches... Like, they're not necessarily the most entertaining to watch, but um, for me, it was good to, to have a match against somebody experienced like John Combs, who's, who's done very well, um, who's done very well recently in, uh, in the super fight circuit and winning North American trials by crushing pretty much everybody uh, in the division, going submission after submission. So to be able to stick to a game plan against a guy like him, I was uh, pretty happy with that kind of performance. He's a super cool dude, guys. He's got a um, guillotine instructional. He catches a lot of arm and guillotines that I'm sure you guys can all pick up a lot of things from. And there you have it, guys. There's the match right there, the breakdown. As you can see, it was little battles throughout the match. 
uh, pretty similar battles, right? We're fighting for inside position. Uh, I was trying to, you know, switch from one leg to another, keep maintain that pace of attack throughout the whole match, and uh, ultimately it paid off. Another thing for you guys to take away is obviously dropping back with the heel already and a hand on the knee to help you, you know, keep yourself close to the partner, control distance, control the angle, and obviously the, the breaking. I hope you guys like it, uh, you enjoy it, share with your friends, with your buddies, let them know what's up, let them know about the off balance, and uh, hopefully we see you guys on the mats after this whole thing is over.